Hi there, thank you for watching this video. Today we are going to see how to install IBM Planning Analytics Workspace version 2.0.5 on Windows Server 2016. So for this, we need to first install the workspace setup files, which can be done from either Fix Central or from if you have the login credentials with IBM, you can also log into your Passport Advantage site with your credentials and download the workspace from there. So you can see here, I'm already logged into the Passport Advantage and I'm going to search for the workspace. Images. And these are all the versions of workspace available for download. And here you can see they have two files. One is for the Microsoft Windows Server 2016 and the other one is if it's for a 2012 version, 2012 Windows Server download file. So I've already downloaded the setup file. I have it me on my D drive. These are all the files that we're going to need to use workspace on this machine. So next, we start with our installation. So before we install the workspace, we need the Docker. So you can go to Google and you put in Planning Analytics Workspace Installation, you see the IBM link. Let's go there and follow the steps that we need to follow. If you go to the prerequisite, so here we are going to do the installation on Windows Server 2016. So let's go to the installation of Docker on the Windows Server. We will be installing Docker Engine Enterprise Edition for the Windows Server. However, before we install the Docker, we need to check if we have the Windows Container Service already installed, as the same is required before we can start and use the Docker. So let's check the Windows Server container first. We go to the Windows PowerShell. Here, we're going to run the command install Windows feature containers. Now, it has installed the Windows feature containers. Currently, it shows that we do not need a restart. However, if it shows any restart required, you may restart the server as well. Now, the next step is to check for the Windows services if all the services are up to date. So for that, we're going to mention, write down the command sconfig. Here you can see all the different configuration options. We are going to check if we require any updates. So I choose the option 6. So it is asking if we are going to check all the updates or the recommended updates only. So let's select the recommended updates. OK, so it has checked for the updates and there are no applicable updates. Let's exit out from here. So now we are going to start with the installation of the Docker. So here, um, let's click on Install Docker Enterprise Windows Edition. It would then direct us to the Docker site. So here you can see the requirements for installation of Docker on the Windows Server. We need a RAM of 4 gigs, a minimum disk space of 32 gigabytes. Um, we're going to run these commands in the Windows PowerShell command prompt. So let's open up a new prompt window. And let's run install module docker msft provider force. Oops. 
Once this is done, we would now run the next command in here. Okay, so now the Docker version 18.09.3 is installed. Once we have the Docker installed, we can check if the server now needs to be boot. Us that we do not need a reboot. So let's just test our Docker installation by running this command here and see if it's all up and running well. Okay. So it says that the Docker client must be run in elevated form to connect. And it may also indicate that a Docker daemon is not running. So for this, we will go to the services window and check if our Docker daemon is running. So if you see here, the Docker engine is not running. So let's start this. <coughs> Once our Docker engine is running, let's try that command again. So we've got the same reply as we have here from the Docker engine enterprise, which shows that our installation is now complete and the Docker daemon is running well. Next, once this is done, we now need to go to the next step, which is download and install the latest supported version of Docker Compose for Windows Server 2016 from the following link. So here on the GitHub site, if you scroll down, you can see all the versions available and for Windows, Linux, Darwin. So from here, I have already downloaded the Docker Compose Windows 64.exe file and this file is to be placed in the C drive in your program files, Docker. So I have the file with me here. I copy the file. Let's go and place it here. Let's run the Docker Compose. Okay, once our Docker Compose has been run, we go back to the PowerShell and we'll now be running the two commands to pull the images from the Docker Hub. And the next one after this is Docker pull. Three point two Windows Server Core. Okay, so now this is done. So now once our Docker and the images are all done and installed, we'll be restarting the server once before we start with the installation of the workspace. So I'm gonna pause the video, restart the server, and then we continue again from there. All right, our server is now back up. Now let's start with the installation of the workspace. So, for this, we are going to run the following command in the PowerShell terminal window. Let's copy this command. So let's change the directory to the location where we have the command file. So if you see, I have my for set up files in the D drive in this folder. And here you can see I have my start PowerShell command. So now we are going to run this command as an administrator from the Windows PowerShell terminal. So let's go here and let's run the command. Okay. 
Install IBM Planning Analytics Docker images, yes. Now this takes a little while, so I'm going to pause the video here and then once we move to the next step, I'm going to resume it from there. Okay, so once the Docker images have been installed, it next asks you to start the administration tool. Yes, um, enter. It opens up the administration tool in a new browser window. So now you can see it has opened up a new browser window with the administration tool. Herein, in my TM1 admin server URI, I would be entering the admin server URI where I have my SQL. Similarly, I would have my application server gateway and my login server gateway. Now let me validate these. Make sure that all the ports are open. Okay, the configuration has been validated. Let's update the services. Okay, let's check the status of the service. So let's refresh this. So you can see it is running all these services. Once the status for the initialization service shows up as completed, we can then log in into the workspace. Let's just refresh and see. Okay, so let's access the server. So herein I would be entering the same URL as is my server on which I am right now and try logging into the workspace. So this actually should be your fully qualified domain name. And I'm now logged into Planning Analytics Workspace.